Howdy, I'm Matt, and in this part of the series is that we're going to be looking back at the top 12 or so questions which have come in uh, from people just like you who have been following this series along, uh, and I'm putting this at the beginning to help you because there's lots and lots of common questions which have been and come up, come, which has been and come up, I've missed a bit more words out, uh, during this series, uh, and I think that you're going to find uh, the answers to most of these very, very useful for you as you go through your, with your journey with iNav. So the first one, okay, now this was quite a popular one, apologies, it wasn't absolutely clear uh, in the videos, but uh, Matt, and again this is a question which has come up, uh, Matt, I have powered up mine like you showed and the servos are not working. Now this is simply down is to the part which I did mention, but it, I didn't, it's my fault, I didn't make it entirely clear, which is that you do need to power your servo rail using an external back. Okay, so normally that would be the BEC or uh, UBEC coming from your ESC to power the servo rail, uh, or if you're using a quad ESC, then you'll need to provide five volts by another means, normally uh, an external uh, five volt regulator or five volt BEC. Uh, and by the way, if you don't know uh, which one to choose, I'll put a link to one in the video description. Uh, I use it, it's a free amp one, which is brilliant. I use it on several models. Uh, next one is Matt. Uh, the Omnibus F4 V2, uh, or is the V3 board, or maybe a 4 or 5 board version, is it the best option? Now, here is the, the irony, okay? Until a F7 board comes out with lots of UART ports to be used, then the F4 boards are gonna be perfect, okay? Now, to the best of my knowledge, there is, uh, to the day of recording, which is the, and it will date the video, uh, the 20th of January 2018, is that there is not an F7 board of a sensible price, which has plenty of UARTs available for you to use. As such, I go, uh, I stick to my suggestion in back in the original video, which you saw a few moments ago, uh, is that an F4, uh, V1, V2, V3, or V5 boards are all perfectly good boards to use. And you shouldn't spend anything like crazy money uh, on these because they're all pretty much of a muchness. Just look out for the features which you're looking for. Ah, now this leads on really nicely. Now, Matt, I see that there's a new dedicated iNav board available. Is it worth the money? And I think this is a brilliant question, and let me just answer this directly. Of course not. Don't waste your money uh, on a board which is pre-configured for iNav. And the reason for that is because with just a few minutes of soldering is that you can solder up your own board and the only difference between a board which is designed for iNav and a board which isn't designed for iNav, maybe Betaflight, which is like the F4 boards, is that one of them has <laughs> one of them doesn't have iNav flashed on it by default. And as you're gonna learn in this series, it's really simple to just flash iNav onto the board. So no, it's not worth the extra money. In fact, the boards which I've seen, they're not F4 boards. They're saying they're F3.5 or something. No, don't waste your money. Uh, go for an F4 board and then just flash iNav on there yourself. It's really straightforward to do. And also keep in the back of your mind, by the time that the pre-made iNav board has been sent to you, uh, the version which is on there is probably already out of date. That brings us on to the next question, which is, Matt, I've heard that the Chrome app, or the iNav Chrome app, is going away soon. Is this true? And unfortunately, the answer is yes. Uh, Google are getting rid of their like App Store, or not their App Store, they're the Google Chrome apps. Uh, as such, don't panic, okay? It's, it's been known about, uh, and the guys over at iNav uh, have been and created a desktop application instead. There's a link to that in the video description, and of course, I'll update the other videos uh, in the video description for the links to, to go to the right places, which you can download uh, for free, of course. Next question, again, this one came in quite a few times, which is, Matt, do I need a flight controller with a barometer in it? And do keep in the back of your mind uh, is that this entire series was based upon a uh, fixed wing. As such, a barometer is not a requirement of iNav. Uh, so no, you don't need a flight controller board with a barometer installed in it, simple as. And by the way, the boards which I use, like the V2 boards, they do actually have a barometer on board, 
But, sorry, I'm just remembering, I read on the Banggood website this morning, and it was a barometer, B-E, instead of B-A. Sorry, that just tickled my sense of humour. Uh, coming back onto the topic, the uh, F4 V2 boards, uh, they do actually have a barometer installed, but I actually set them to none uh, in the iNav configurator, uh, because there's just no need for them. So you do not need a barometer on a fixed wing model. Keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, they also, just a secondary one to that, Matt, do you need a board with a magnometer or compass enabled on it? No, you don't. Remember, we are dealing with fixed wing. As such, you do not need a barometer and you do not need a magnometer. It's nice if the boards have those on there, but don't forget you're going to be charged more for those components, um, say 20, 30% more. Uh, and for fixed wing, you do not need either of those. And that brings us on to the next question, which is quite a popular one. Uh, Matt, will this GPS XYZ, uh, will it work with iNav? And the short answer is probably, you know, if it's a if it's a MAN, if it's an M7 or an M6N uh, GPS unit, chances are it will work. Um, and the best thing for you to do is try it out. Uh, in short, and of course, if you are stuck, nip across to the iNav wiki, uh, and I'm going to put a link to this in the video description for you, uh, which will give you the, the page to the GPS setup details, uh, and just so uh, there are any caveats with any strange uh, GPS modules. But if you're using the black puck, which I suggested back in video one, the puck which I use on all my iNav models, uh, then you'll be absolutely fine because that's a Neo MAN, the newer type of GPS, which also picks up the Russian satellites, which you'll find out in a, or may have already found out in an episode in, in an episode in this series. Next one is uh, again just continuing with the I, uh, with the GPS theme. Matt, the GPS that you showed only works on 3.5, or sorry, 3.3 volts, but you powered it with 5 volts. What gives? Short answer, stop being a smart ass. In the top right hand corner, there's a link to the video. Uh, those GPS units have a voltage regulator on, uh, on them. Right, quickly moving on. Uh, Matt, will you be showing VTEL or custom mixes? No, the answer to that is no, I won't. However, don't let that put you off you as an iNav. If you nip across to the iNav wiki, I'll put a link down in the video description for you, uh, is that on the iNav wiki, there are many different uh, exotic mi mixes, one of which is a VTEL configuration. There's also one there for the Sky Hunter and a collection of other models as well, the common different configurations. It's as literally as simple as copy and paste and paste that into your console and then type in save. I feel that I would perhaps be insulting your intelligence if I showed you how to do copy, paste and type save just to set up an exotic mix it's really straightforward link to that is in the video description below for you next question and this was actually a very common one uh, and it's uh, the, the question was Matt will you be showing the auto launch feature and again I'm afraid to say the answer is no and the reason for that is that I personally class the auto launch feature as a gimmick okay that's all i class it as uh, and it is of absolutely no use to me and i very much doubt it's going to be of any use real use to you because i'm assuming that you're more of a seasoned pilot you can launch your own models you can lob it or just hand launch it as you do with 99 percent like my me and uh, no all of my models i hand launch uh with one exception which is the clouds which is huge and one of my flying buddies chucks it for me uh, So there's no um the auto launch feature. It is a very cool feature. I can see the use cases where it would be beneficial. Maybe if you're disabled, for example. If you would like to know how the auto launch feature uh, works and how it can be set up, again, I'm gonna pop a little link down in the video description for you because it's really straightforward. It's a, just a straightforward flight mode and there are a couple of settings, if at all, you need to change them uh, as well. Really straightforward to do if you want a feature like that. But just be aware, I won't be covering it on this uh, in this uh, series because I do class it as a bit of a gimmick and uh, 99% like of all my models, I can hand launch by myself. Uh, next one. Can iNav do this or that or that? Don't know. Best place for you to find out the answers to that are across on the iNav wiki. And again, 
You'll notice that I've mentioned many times here, uh, nip across to the iNav wiki. And the reason for that is that we cover an awful lot during this series, but there's always gonna be that question which you may have, which is not covered in this series. And the best place for you to find out the answers are across on the iNav wiki. It's straightforward as that. That's where the bulk of this series was based upon. Um, granted, I had to personally update the, the, the fixed wing guide uh, to get it to a kind of good level, but most of the questions, you'll find the answers to them on the iNav wiki. Again, there's a link to that in the video description. The next one is not actually a question, it's actually a word of caution for you. Now, and this word of caution is around the USB sockets on these tiny little boards. You do, and I do stress this at the time when we look at the board, but you do need to go very, very careful with them. There was actually one chap which commented uh, on one of the videos that he'd been through three boards in a row and they were all crap because he'd managed to snap off the USB connector. Now, they're, they are fragile devices, and if you manhandle these tiny little connectors, you will break them off. It doesn't take much to do that. Personally, I've not been and done that on any of the boards which I own, uh, because I don't manhandle handle them. So do keep that in the back of your mind. The little USB connectors are very, very fragile, and treat them with the respect which they require. And the last question, uh, and again, this was, these were the top common questions by the last one, uh, which has been coming about this series on iNav, is that, Matt, will you be doing a multi-rotor version of this series? And unfortunately, I won't. As many of you already know, I have zero interest in quadcopters and multi-rotors. They, they are just not my cup of tea or cup of coffee, as the case may be. However, I do have a little bit of a good rumor for you. Uh, apparently, Joshua Bardwell uh, is going to be looking at doing a series uh, on iNav, hopefully, well, I assume, for multi-rotors, because multi-rotor is his kind of thing. I'm more of a kind of fixed-wing guy, flying wing, let's wrap it around trees, you kind of guy, you know. Uh, so, and quads just really don't do it for me, and I'd be doing you a disservice by trying to fumble through something which I have zero passion for. So, I hope that you can appreciate my, appreciate my honesty there. Uh, but on the flip side, don't panic. Rumor is Joshua Bardwell will be doing something with iNav uh, and multi-rotors in the near future. Don't quote me on that. I'll put a link to his video, uh, is to his YouTube channel in the video description for you. Now, if you cannot wait uh, for maybe Joshua to, to create a series on multi-rotors or to, to find the answers which you're looking for to set up a multi-rotor, well, I've got some really good news for you, which is that the bulk of this series will be applicable to multi-rotor mo mo models. And the reason for that is because it's all pretty much of a muchness, you know? When you're calibrating your ESC, it's the same as having four. You just obviously, if they're going in the wrong direction, you might want to hook up BH Heli Suite and reverse one of your ESCs or change the wiring, as the case may be. Now, the differences aside, there, there, there are two technical requirements which you need to know about uh, and are a requirement of the actual flight controller board themselves. Number one is that you do require a barometer. So in one of the previous questions, you, I mentioned about do you need a barometer? Uh, and the answer is no for fixed wing. However, for a multi-rotor, you do require a barometer to be available to it. So as such, the V2 boards, which had the barometers on, would be great. Now, there is actually a caveat, which is that you also require a magnometer, or AKA compass. And the reason why you require a compass is because if you think about a quadcopter, for example, is that it can yaw in any direction at any point in time. Unlike a fixed wing model, which generally flies forwards into trees and bushes. Uh, anyway, uh, the, the quadcopter can yaw at any point in time. As such, a compass or magnometer is required. Now, like I said, I do have some good news for you that on that. The V2 boards do have a barometer installed on them. And also, the uh, GPS puck, which I've been suggesting all along, 
they do actually have a compass in them, a magnometer, but it's on the underside of the board. So what I'm gonna do is that refer you across to, funny enough, the iNav Wiki. Uh, nip across to the iNav Wiki. Uh, I've put a link to the GPS setup and compass page because uh, you need to put in a special command to tell uh, iNav that the, the chip is upside down. Uh, something like flip 180. Can't remember the exact command off the top of my head. That's why I'm suggesting nip across to the Wiki uh, and you'll have your answers there. So with that said, if you have any questions at all, do ask underneath each individual video. That is the best place to ask. And don't forget, and again, I've said it quite a few times here already, uh, if you are stuck, nip across to the iNav Wiki. I will also put a link to the iNav Facebook group as well, uh, where it's a dedicated Facebook group just for iNav, uh, and where cool pilots like myself and you can join up, show off our models, but also, if you've got any questions, you can also ask them there as well. So with that said, for myself, Matt, happy iNavin and cheerios.